Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Mike from Mobox. Just to let you know, we released a new mix on Mobox Music. It's called Deep Sleep Mix 2. Go over there and check that out. Anyways, guys, let's take a look at what we're going to be doing today. So this uh, is actually a fairly simple animation. I don't think this is outside of the realm of most people. However, we're going to be doing some pretty cool tricks with expressions, which I'll admit I'm a total noob at using expressions in After Effects, but we will be using some expressions to help us achieve this look while also making it highly customizable and highly manageable later and deeper into the production of it um, through expressions by using the index tool as well as the delay tool. So anyways, guys, let's go ahead and get started. So opening up After Effects here, you can see this animation is just it's just going on forever. It's just living its life. Um, so I'm going to stop that and I'm going to create a new composition. Anyways, just FYI. So I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to make this bigger. So um, let's start out by creating two shapes. So I'm going to just create a circle, which that size looks about good. And I'm going to use this align tool to align it. If you don't have that, you can just go to Windows Align. And I am going to uh, add a null object, layer new null object. I'm going to rename this to controller and I'm going to name this to master and I'm going to duplicate that layer and I'm going to rename this to slave and I'm going to drag that below. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to make these 3D layers. I'm going to add some slider controls to this controller and I'll go through what they mean later, but I'm just going to drag these on. I'm going to drag three. Uh, if I just select the controller, just drag three on it and I'm going to rename these by opening this going to effects just right clicking and rename this to delay. I'm just using this, that, that slider as kind of like a additional accessory for me to kind of make some adjustments throughout the animation. And you'll see what I mean here in a second. So I'm gonna, I'll just make that slave invisible. I'm just gonna hit P on the keyboard, set a position keyframe. Let me go, I don't know, negative 200 or maybe just 200. And then at two seconds, set it to zero. And I'm going to use this tool by Mount MoGraph to smooth these out, but that's basically what you want to look like, look for in the uh, graph editor. I don't know why it's not letting me pull the tag, so I'm just going to skip that, pretend like I know, I know what I'm doing. Um, and I'm just going to add an expression by holding Alt and hitting the stopwatch. So I'm going to use a loop, a loop tool. We did a full tutorial on on how to loop compositions and stuff in After Effects. I'll link it somewhere, but Here's where things get a little bit more interesting or fun if uh, you're crazy like me. So I'm gonna make this slave visible. And just so I can see both of them, I'm gonna just select and hit T on the keyboard and, and drag these down just a bit so I can just at least see the difference here. And I'm going to open up the size, not scale, size. So the reason why I'm using size and not scale is because if I later choose to make outlines instead of shaded colors, size, will maintain the same width of the circle edges, whereas scale makes the, the width larger. Um, I'm not gonna be using that, but if you are, you wanna keep that in mind. And I wanna have the option to be able to use this composition later for maybe something different. So uh, I'm gonna open up size for both of these. And I'm going to hold Alt again on size on this expression. And I'm gonna type in a few things. Okay, so I'm gonna create a few expressions here. Actually just one expression, but it's kind of a lot of typing. So I is my index. So I just wanna kind of come here and make sure I just drag that over to my index shift. I'm gonna say C, which I'm gonna use as my constant or my control. And then I'm gonna link this size to that size and multiply it by the first interesting portion of this tutorial, which is called index. So index counts which layer number this is. So you can see right here to the left of each layer, you have one, two, three. So my index for this layer is three. So you just wanna keep that in mind as you're doing this. And now you're gonna see why I have the index shift. So I'm gonna do minus I. The reason why I did minus I is that my master object is my second layer in the composition, okay? But if I want the size of my slave to be proportionally the same size as my master, plus maybe a consistent amount more, I wanna multiply it by, by its index. So at this rate, it's gonna be the same size as that, but it's gonna be double the size, right? 
So you can see there that it's actually double the size. Um, actually, it's triple the size, but once I change this index shift to one, it's now double the size, right? If I set this to two, then it should be almost the exact same size. Just make sure the scales are the same. Yep, they are. Um, but what you'll see here is that if I open this master and I adjust this, the, um, the size, which is setting this to one, makes it double. If I increase the size, it increases the size on both. And that's what I want. So that's one piece of it, but there's still more that I need to put in here. So I also want to multiply this by my constant. I don't want to use that big of a number, but the slider control goes up to like thousands. So I'm going to multiply this by 100. So that way um, I could then divide by my constant, which is C. And it gives me a lot more control over this. So you can see here that um, I have much finer control up at this upper end. Whereas if I didn't do that, this would just be very difficult to maneuver. So that's kind of how I used to change the size and make it as wide as I want it to be. Okay, so that's the first part. The first part is basically done. But let me show you kind of what that indexing allows us to do. If I take the slave layer and I hit control D, it will basically utilize with the index number again and use that as the multiplier. So that's twice as big, that's three times as big, that's four times as big. But then in this controller, I can come in here and I can adjust the size. So that way um, it all looks right. Okay, now I don't need all these yet, but the point is, is that everything I do to this slave, when I duplicate it later, later it will just be there and be exactly how I want it to be. So the big portion here that I want to use is the position, right? Because that's what we have this master doing. We have this position going up and down. So again, holding alt, hitting position. Now we're going to start typing a lot more. So I got this idea from Dan um, over at Creative Cow website, uh, the forums. He basically is the greatest person ever. I was wanting to learn how to do this and I found out that he wrote this back in like 2009. So it's really simple, but I did make some modifications uh, for my needs, but it uh, helped me understand how to use delay and how to use index. So basically I'm gonna say D equals my delay. D equals delay. I want my delay to progressively get larger, right? So the, the more number of layers I have, I want them to kind of progressively the delay getting a little bit larger. And the reason for that is that it makes it look a little bit more flowing and a little bit less robotic. So it's a little bit more interesting. Um, you don't have to do this part, but I'm doing it. So you can, if you want to follow along, this is what I'm, this is what I'm doing. So I'm going to multiply by uh, index minus one. So I'm saying, so I'm saying, look at, take my delay value, multiply it by that index number, which is two, and divide by two, and then divide by 100. I mean, obviously I can condense this down into a division and a division into a multiplication, but I just chose not to. <laughs> so, and then for my uh, master, I'm gonna just call this M. So my master is, of course, my master layer. I'm going painfully slow because I'm incapable of doing anything faster, but also so you can follow along. So now I want to say, okay, find the master, go to the transform property, go to position of that transform property, and now look at the value at a specific time. And that specific time I'm going to outline is time minus my delay multiplied by my index minus one. But really I could even do index minus my index shift. I'm being real crazy. And actually up here, I can do the same. So that way it's a little bit more precise. And what did I have wrong here? Okay, that was very weird. Don't really know what that was about. I think I was missing a parentheses here. Yeah, I must've been missing a parentheses. Well, that took way longer to find than I would like it to. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna just set this delay to maybe like one. Now let's see what we get. How about six? So you could kind of see what we're getting here and it's actually pretty great. Um, I'm gonna down duplicate this slave a few times so we can see what this looks like on a bigger picture. 
And if I decrease the delay to maybe two, you can see what, what I get. So that looks really nice. The outside's nice and slow. I like it. So here's another thing. Let's just delete all of these layers. Again, this is the beauty of it, is that I don't have to do it to all the layers and readjust the timing. Also, I want this to go faster or slower. I could very easily just kind of do that here. Which again, I don't have like a million layers to mess with, which is just a beautiful, beautiful thing. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do also kind of transparency one. So again, holding Alt, selecting that. Um, I'm gonna say, I want the transparency to do 100, but then I wanna divide it by the index number minus the index slider and close it off. So now this layer will get less and less transparent as we go out. So you can see here that there's some pretty crazy stuff going on and that's all about messing with this, the length of the animation as well as the delay. Okay, so that looks pretty cool. Now I could start adding layers on top of this. So let's say layer new adjustment layer, layer new camera. I could start adding stuff, but but you see here that this thing gets kind of shifted. So for this controller, I could just hold alt, go to index shift and do um, index shift equals index. I think it needs parentheses. No, it doesn't. So that works. And now let's make this a lot cooler. So again, I could just go and I could just delete all of these and I can open this up and I can go into contents, ellipse, um, maybe fill and hold alt and just make it follow the color of this master. Why can't I seem to do the right thing ever? Let me just drag that over to, to color. So now if I come in here and I change this color to let's say red, um, it also changes, which is nice. And then I can create a layer new solid, maybe orange for the background. And I could just duplicate this, this again, control D. Looking pretty cool. Now I'm gonna save this because it's gonna kill my RAM and I don't want it to crash. Okay, so that looks pretty cool, but again, we could always make it more interesting, which we must do. So I am going to, uh, let's see, maybe go into, uh, not camera, maybe left view. And I'm going to master all of these to the controller and then rotate this, maybe negative 90. Maybe I need two views, one being the active camera and the other one being kind of what I'm gonna change. So I'm gonna just try to grab this point. Maybe bring that in. Wow, that is moving a lot. So again, beauty of this, you just open up the master, hit K on the keyboard, go to that keyframe, and set this to maybe 100. I don't want it to move as much. That's kind of a crazy amount of motion. And holding all, drag these in. And now it's just a matter of trying to find a setup that works well for me. So I think that looks really cool. Uh, one thing that I learned from Video Copilot is just always add a little bit of film grain to it. Um, I've been using the noise function. I don't know if there's a better one, but I'm just gonna drop that onto adjustment layer and set this to like five. This definitely won't help you um, in terms of if you have RAM issues and it will slow down the animation to all hell, but um, it is fun, so. Um, another thing I'm gonna show you how to do is you're gonna say, Mike, it doesn't loop properly. And let me explain. So I'm gonna hit N on the keyboard here. So it's gonna pull this, shrink it, to shrink my composition area just to that size or make my workable area a little bit smaller. And I'm just gonna play this out for you. And you're gonna see that it's not gonna loop properly. So that's not good, okay. But what happens when you drag this out all the way to like eight or 10 seconds? Um, I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. 
So basically it's it's entered its rhythmic motion. So it's in a better position. From here, maybe I would maybe scale this up. Just so it doesn't quite become as obvious that they're bunching up there at the end, but uh, it shouldn't bunch up anymore. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new about indexes and delaying keyframes. Um, if you did, please be sure to give this video a like, subscribe, check out other videos on this channel, and be sure to go check out Mobox Music. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching.